Good. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah. Hello. It's uh, Mates FC podcast. Uh, my name's Dave Chase. Uh, I'm the director or something. And this is Andy. Hi, I'm Good Andy. Evening. I'm one of the uh, coaches at Mates FC and uh, Football Fitness. Um, I'm also the welfare officer at um, Mates FC and a mental health first aider as well. So that's me. And uh, Andy's also a pudding today. But I don't have anything I've, festive. I've come festive. I thought we were getting festive, but obviously the joke's on me. What you can't see is the completely <laughs> round knitted item and he's got no legs under like he's just round. Um <laughs> which is nice actually that reminds me of a story of when i was at school um someone dressed me as a giant breast and pushed me on a skateboard to outside someone else's house who was having a sleepover and do you remember those grown sticks that go oh, oh, and they left me outside <laughs> this is so weird um they left me outside the house knocked on the door right and then the person opened the door <laughs> there was just a massive boob there and then i poked my head out which was a nipple right it was like a, a red beret which I, if you imagine me crouched on a, on a skateboard and I'm an up pointed um, breast, I was like that. And then I've popped my head out the top and just went and then pushed myself down the path, which is quite an angle on the skateboard at a big boob. Um, I'd imagine that's what you're roughly doing at the moment with your pudding outfit. Yeah, it must be similar. Kind of. Your own. <laughs> I haven't got the beret. <laughs> I don't know when my red beret's gone. Um, yeah. Anyway, so, um, Mates FC, just a little recap for everyone who, anyone that's joining us uh, new tonight. Um, excuse me, just burping. Anyway, um, I just drank a drink very fast and it fell in my lung. Um, so, Makes FC, we are a football team with a difference. We are here to help you improve your mental health, uh, regain positive mental health, and use football to do anything we can to break stigma, to help get people back into the game, and get you back out on that pitch, basically. And we want no commitment. We just put our games up as events on our Facebook page. And that's Mates FC um, Facebook page. And if you fancy coming to play, put your name down for it. And if you don't fancy on the day, don't turn up. It's no problem. That's what we're here for. There's no, you haven't got to hide from us after you do that or anything like that. It's what we're set up for. It's what we want. We want to just, when the time is right for you, the time's right for us. You, you come and join us whenever you want. So that's what we do. And we've had so we we started about last october so october 2019 and obviously with lockdown we could only really get going um after about i think it's about july first game through about august this year uh we've done a tournament last what well, we was in a tournament last year but um yeah it's just been it's just gone really really well and we've adapted how we work based on what people's needs are and a big thing of that needs is people that have suffered time loss injuries uh, through football and haven't thought they'd ever play again or haven't thought they'd be able to play and if you want to come and do 10 minutes do 10 minutes if you want to just test the water and see how you get on do it it's no trouble we, we do whatever whatever suits you we just want to get you back in the game so with andy as welfare as well um your health and your you know we just want to help you just want to do whatever we can to get you back out there and uh what's sort of some of the things that you found um since we started things that we've changed maybe where we've we've no i think to me it's been more of people that haven't played for years through injury and that's been a bit of a bonus to me seeing people come back because um, that wasn't originally part of the formula. That's something that's uh, that's developed, and it's been brilliant. I think. What, what's your view on that? You know, you've got much bigger experience in foot, local football than I have. 
Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I think um, I think the bit for me was, you know, when we very first started, it was um, it was about guys that were sort of struggling to commit, maybe, um, to joining a football team, and um, you know, because of other things going on in in their lives, um, they couldn't maybe commit, and then obviously that added to pressures that were going on in their lives, and and we kind of gave them their football without the commitment and without the pressure of without you know, the pressure, if, yeah. if, if they can't turn up one week. Um, and I think from that, it, it's just grown arms and legs really. And it's just, you know, from like exactly to your point, we've now seen guys that um, have had to leave the game through injury and then not really sort of had the confidence to come back from injury. And, you know, there's, there's a whole multitude of, of reasons of why, people stop playing football and it could be you know they kept kept suffering injuries and but because they they were committed to a team they felt that they had to play a whole game or a half a game or something like that and their body just couldn't cope with that so we're seeing guys now that can come and just like you said they can do 20 minutes come off see how they're feeling go back on for another 10 minutes another 20 minutes and but there's not that pressure of I've committed to this now. I've got to play. I've got to be part of the team. The, you know, the team are sort of relying on me. And, you know, we've been really, really fortunate with how it's grown that it's given us the ability to, you know, some games we have so many people that it's really hard to give everyone equal game time. Which Well, you know, there's also been games where we've had so many people wanting to play that we've actually changed who we're playing so we can play ourselves to put two teams out ourselves. Yeah, we, you know, from your traditional background with football, local football, is just an unheard of thing, really, isn't it? Your A and your B team playing. Well, these aren't A and Bs; they're you know they're both equal. Um, but we will adapt, and we will do anything we can to give people that opportunity. If that day is what they're ready for, then we will facilitate what they're ready for. We're not going to push them away because we've got too many people. We're going to do everything we possibly can to uh incorporate that and and make it work yeah and i think i think that's a big thing i think it's a team for everybody you know you you don't like you know just because you know we sit under the mate's umbrella you, you don't have to be struggling you could just be wanting to improve your your positive and, mental health you know if, if you've got an injury and you want to get back out there or you know i've had people in the last few weeks say i didn't realize how much i've been missing football when we done the Seabrights game, for example, example, a few people yeah. after that they were playing, they were back playing for that, you know, the reason of that game. But yeah. actually, afterwards, they were like, "I didn't realise I missed it that much. I didn't realise I needed that in my life so much." And you know, they're going to start getting back in the swing of it. We've had a couple come over already, um, yeah. and it's brilliant. And if it improves your positive mental health, that's what we're here for. So, yeah, and I think, sorry, no, yeah, no. I think it's great. I just think, you know, I can't believe the response we've had from it. Um, you know, the the positivity of the guys that have attended. Um, I've met some really, really like great guys and girls through it. You know, they're really positive, come along with the right attitude, um, and also we've been really, we've been really. Um, blessed as well with the teams that we've 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 had volunteered to play us you know they've been excellent they played the game in the right spirit of what it's about you know um it's just you know they're competitive games but it's like a, it, it's almost a different kind of you know competition it's still competitive it's still you know a physical game but um but just played in the right spirit you know after the game everyone's been so you know, we haven't really been able to do a lot of handshakes or anything like that this this year. There's been, but there's been a lot of elbow bumps, um, and it's been really good and really good spirited. Like we played some excellent, excellent teams with really, you know, good good group as well. Um, so yeah, I think um, we've been really fortunate in not only our team and how that's grown and how it's improving and how the guys are get guys and girls are getting better, but also the teams that we've come up against i think we've been really fortunate to get some great, great and guys. That's thing. this world again i'm i'm a stranger to local football um i've got a business head on as in 
management organization wise and project management and stuff like that so i see things and just think why can't it happen like that why do we have to do that why do we do that and then you lot see things of well this is how we have to do it this is how we do it traditionally and then between us i'm like why can't we do this and you go well, we can't do that because this is the rules i'm like oh, okay but there'll be other things you're like mm, yeah we could do that it's just that no one else does that and let's try that way let's let's try that different approach and that's been working you know that combinations work really well and we all now think outside the box as well and and this world of the teams that we're playing at the moment we'll call it like the charity football um world as you say it's every single the difference is these people aren't playing because they are playing as the team let's say and they want to be in a team where they're trying to work their way through the league or anything like that they're all playing because individually it's benefiting them and they've all got their own reasons to play and because they know that they're playing like that they're playing to support their teammates and i think that's a very different world i think it's a very you know you can have egos in football and you can have people that wanna um hey i think we're actually gonna have billy <laughs> sorry um and you can have people that you know it's about them and about their personal game but in this world of football at the moment, how I feel it. Um, in this world of football at the moment, this charity world, we're just in such a lovely community. Right, so we've got Billy here. Do you want to just introduce yourself? Can you hear us, Billy? I can hear you. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Just just uh, explain who you are. <laughs> my name's uh, my name's Billy. Um, um trying to help uh, mates out on and off the pitch where where I can. Um, I'm really sorry. I've been trying to get on for ages, and I was just watching an old video. So there was, like, four people on the other video. That's bizarre. Um, yeah, so, okay, so Billy, um, we've got a lot of people in the background who help us out or are there to help us out, and also they're there to help us um, direct where we go. Now, with our team, something Andy touched on earlier, we've met such a gr lovely group of people. And bear in mind that the team is a different team every single week, pretty much. There's not a lot of opportunity to sort of gel together as friends, and especially this year where we haven't been able to go to the pub every week. Or we haven't been able to catch up with each other out of football. So we literally turn up each week, see who's there that week to, to play against, uh, sorry, to play with. And, and that's as much as a, of a relationship you generally get. But we've had so many regular people playing for us that have been so supportive, especially the last couple of weeks. And, and it, you know, they've, they've really sent us some beautiful messages and really said how much they appreciate things. And that was something I weren't really expecting in, in the nicest possible way, because we're just doing what we think we need to be doing, really. Um, but you know we, we've got a brilliant group there and we have them direct our direct, you know where we go any ideas about how we change the club or any new types of teams we're looking at putting together we put to them to you know gauge their view and see how they want it directed so billy um is someone that's a pair of hands behind the scenes um for a couple of projects that we'll be working on and things where he's got some background on it but equally He's played for us. And where do you live at the moment? Uh, South Tottenham. Right. South London. And he Top comes to play. He comes to Chelmsford to come and play for us. Mm. Mad. Yeah, right. yeah, well, <laughs> it's not actually that far. It's about 45 minute drive. But, um, you know, when we're playing a game of football, you know, and you're doing it for for, for this for this reason, then, you know, it's, it doesn't take, you know, it's, it's no it's no effort whatsoever so and it's a great bunch of lads you know i get to see i still get to see a lot of people that um, i used to play football with as well and um yeah i really enjoy uh coming down and being being part of what's what you guys are doing by the way Andy, from, i love this job from... <laughs> an absolute treat yeah. well, i got told that's, uh, I got, that's not I crazy told we'll go festive and then i got in and i'm like the guy you invite to a fancy dress party and it's not really a fancy dress party <laughs> 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 uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. So, All right. You'll be that guy. Um, yeah. So, Billy, so from a player's point of view, you know, obviously you've played for lots of local teams over the years and that, but what would you feel? What, what What's your feeling that's a bit different about when you play for us? Like, what have you noticed? Uh, there's more of a sense to... <laughs> Is it that we haven't got a clue what we're doing? <laughs> no, not at all, you know. I think everyone's just turning up to um, to have fun, you know. There's that competitive edge still, you know. Everyone still wants to win because um, I think that's in our nature when you're playing, you know, a game like this. Um, but in this sense, you know, no one's really... No one pressures anyone, you know. You can find in, in a lot of uh, grassroots football um, tensions can get quite high on the pitch and people can argue and, you know, things boil over. But I think when you're getting, you know, a, a group of people together that just want to be there and get out of the house for a little bit and um, and meet people, then, you know, it, it you, f- you feel you, there's no there's less tension within you, you know, and you're more all... like the sort of the comfort of having a kick around over a park rather than being whipped. Uh, well, no, rather than a, you know, Alex Ferguson hairdryer. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, you could give us that hairdryer. Um, I think you're more like, you might get me like a drunken Delia Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but first, I've got to understand a bit more about you. I'll, I'll probably do that and you'll be, I'll be looking at, the, I'll be on the wrong end of the pitch or something like that, you know, <laughs> scouting at the wrong team, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, I think um, I think we should start making a book of Dave's football in terms because they are brilliant. I don't pretend to know yeah. anything. I he, don't pretend to know anything. He needs to get a, what was it? He, he got a goal. Do a goal. Done it. Do a goal. Do a do goal. A goal. Shoot do. some goals. <laughs> All you got to yeah, do is do, do a goal more than them, and we've won the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is that is literally right. I hate it. <laughs> you're in a goal, right? Yeah. That's not like saying a goal stick. You goal know, stick. I haven't got it wrong. <laughs> um, it but um, I do no, see it. Post, you mean? I get really annoyed about like watching commentary. Lolly post. <laughs> I just watch commentary and I think, what? Why? You, why don't you just shut up? Like. um Oh yeah, we need to say this. You know, we just need to win, and that's literally, you know, yeah. the, the commentary. Well, you just need to beat them. Yeah. Well, that's the beautiful thing I think about watching match of the day on um, on catch up is you can just fast forward all of that. Yeah, that yeah, rubbish yeah. that they're talking. That's the only time I watch it. I can't be sitting there listening to them just repeating themselves every week. It's not exactly. What that's exactly. That's my view. I just think like, what are you talking about? Like. Surely, if if the if the goal is to go, goal is who gets the most goals, I know it doesn't quite work like that. I think uh, I think what we should do on match of the day is have like an alternative match of the day. So you could you could listen to Dave. <laughs> he did he he did a better goal than the other guy. <laughs> so we gave him get, two for that. He managed to get it in between the poles. <laughs> the one of our poles. Little, uh, one. <laughs> One of the things that we're looking at, I don't know, the thing is, I, I don't know what's going on. Um, but um, yeah, some, sometimes, um, what was I talking about? So we're, we're looking at doing one of the charity things we're looking at doing next year, or like a fundraiser type thing, is uh, like a penalty shootout thing all day and see how many penalties we can get right through the day. Um, and uh, someone said, Oh, are you gonna like do that? I was like, No, like. Because I'll probably just kick, kick the moon out of the sky or something. Um, yeah, go have a just, go. I'll, I bet you wouldn't. You, you know, you might hit the target and then you, you'll feel great. We might, might find you. out. We might find out that you're the new Messi. And we I think you. I want to be surprised. We're stuck to would just to take penalties and then you can go back off again. Yeah. <laughs> you might, to, to be Literally fair, you might be a little bit more like Ab um, Ayam Mulby. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm guessing that it's going to be a bit like. So if I was a Ray's simp, um, I've got this thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, because he's all right. Um, I've got this thing that, <laughs> you know, when someone has like, how would you put it? Makes an effort in stuff. Like, if if I saw a brilliant guitarist, I just think I'm never going to be that good. I'm never going to pick a guitar up. Right. Same with football. I look at. I think. Oh, you know, like Beckham or whatever. That'd be great, uh, but I ain't going to be like that, so I won't bother even trying. So I'm very lazy like that. But on the flip side of that, I might be unbelievable, and uh, 
I'm injury free, um, apart from obesity and <laughs> fitness. But other than that, I'm actually. Let's use obesity there in a positive way. That's helping to build my muscle legs, uh, my leg muscles up. Yep. Um, Good muscle legs. Yeah, we've got them. My bosom around. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so but the I more might... you play, the, the 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 more weight you'll lose, and then you'll get better and better each week. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah then I'll <laughs> But um, that's the hardest thing when you say about wanting to do something and not trying because you won't be as good as somebody else. I think you imagine the amount of people that don't do try it and will never know, you know, I could have been the best. I could have been a world-class table tennis player. I just didn't try. I'm basically Susan Boyle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same. I reckon like, I, never did, I, never did, I, never did, I never did gymnastics, but I could. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, you could, have, you, could have, you could have been the next big, big player. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should have tried <laughs> ballet. I might have yeah. been the next, uh, you know. I, I, I don't know. Really know. Really. <laughs> but Darcy Bustle. Yeah, that's Darcy Bustle. Bustle. Yeah, I could have been. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I reckon you and I could do some brilliant pirouettes. We'd be like, we just, we'd drill through the floor as we spin round. But, um, <laughs> we'd I just feel secure. sorry for the person who's got to do the lift. Yeah. We'll do it together. <laughs> you and I, dirty dancing. The dirty dancing we can do a half club oh, show. Um <laughs> but um yeah, I think yeah. I'll stick to football. Um, we're saying about the penalty thing, and do you remember what year was uh the American World Cup? 94. Yeah, yeah. Remember when Diana Ross um she done the opening show <sighs> and she was like running around the pitch singing, and then she had to run up, she had to do a penalty, and she missed the goal. But when what was supposed to happen is when she kicks the penalty, the goal explodes and falls in half. <laughs> but the ball went off the other direction and it still just blew up. <laughs> uh, I'd be like, there'd be no goalie. It's all a setup. I still can't do it. You know, I'll, or I'll and all, she to, all she had to do is do a goal. Yes, yeah, that do would be it. Thing and do a goal. <laughs> uh, but I think also, like, um, Again, I'd like to, I'd like to think that if I was a singer, I'd like to be Michael Jackson, Prince, something incredible like that. I'd be John Barrowman if I ever became. <laughs> I would be John Barrowman. There's no two ways. Good, to be I, fair, and I I'd be, he was he like was he a detective once? No, John Barrowman. He played a detective, didn't he? He was in a TV show. Who's in Doctor <laughs> Who? Oh, we done that for <laughs> Doctor Who. Uh, <sighs> It's nah. not Miss Marple, if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, I thought it was Poirot. Uh, nah. He wasn't Jessica <laughs> Fletcher. Yeah. Oh, I love her. <laughs> um, yes, I do. We, we, we were talking about football, I think. But the thing is, you, you like <laughs> me and Ty were at the uh, storage, the secure storage facility the other day, and um, we was getting some stuff ready for football training, uh, football fitness club on Thursday. And I went there because I knew what I needed to take because I knew what I have to use and give out and stuff. But then Rich, each week, he puts together what the drills are going to be. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, if you can just grab the stuff for the drills. And I was just like, like uh, I don't know what anything is. Like, we stood there and me and Si, he's like, going, oh, if you just grab those 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 flags. And I'm like, and there's like, he just pointed to the thing. Oh, I can do that. So basically, it's like having a giant toddler there. Uh, <laughs> point at something, and I'll pick it up. And I'll, but I don't really know what everything is. But I won't, you know, I don't pretend that I do. Yeah. <laughs> I always remember one thing. Cool. They said, uh, "What's this called?" And they held up. Um, <laughs> they held up a test tube, right? And it was like year seven, first time we'd ever done science. And she held up a test tube and she said, "What's this?" And I said a Bunsen burner, or vice versa. She held up a Bunsen burner. I said it was a test tube, and she just like laughed in my face. Oh <laughs> no! Oh dear! Was it in front of everyone? The whole class was there. Yeah. God, that's been the least scars. <laughs> that's why I don't do anything anymore. Because <laughs> what's her name? What's her name? Let's go yeah. find her. <laughs> um. But then, like, we had a uh, mate sponsored one of my friends' uh, stock rod. He was a stock rod driver. And we sponsored his stock rod for a couple of years. And I used to go to all the stock rod races. Brilliant. And me and his dad would be there. 
and fixing the, his dad would be fixing the car between races and i'll just stand there like again like taking a toddler he'll be like oh can you pass me the blah 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 i'm like they go red handle <laughs> and uh, yeah, don't get me wrong i know like tools and stuff but there was all like special things um but it just like it'll use slang and i'll be like no, that's a, that's a tire. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's uh, a dog. Yeah, just passing the Labrador. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So, um, as you can see, we, we we enjoy. We don't take things too seriously. What we do take seriously is making feel people feel better by playing for us and getting involved with us. That's all our goal is, um, and that's what we want to do. Um, and and that's basically it. We we want you to be happy. We want you to get back out there. We want you to have that buzz that you've got out that day and you've done something you didn't think you'd be able to do anymore or vice versa, something you haven't tried before. We've got people that have never played football that come and play for us. And we want every... That's something in 2021 that we're working on a bit more is that complete um, flow through from come and do football fitness club and football training if you just want to have a kick around and you've never played football you know there's not so much as skills necessarily involved in all of those drills and any that you can't do or don't feel comfortable doing you just don't do simple as that it's it's not like being at school where you're being told you've got to do it it's if that suits you and same with injury uh, there's a lot of drills that sometimes with certain injuries um people aren't comfortable doing and they don't want to risk their injury or their recovery by doing that so just don't do that element of it it's no trouble so we've got that for beginners complete beginners or just people that want to dip their toe back in the water basically um then we've got the football team and we we do five aside as well we do um five aside tournament will be coming up again as soon as this next I think, well, we'll get on to COVID in a minute, but once we get the next proper block going, I think um, we'll be back with uh, five-side tournaments and things like that. So it's a great opportunity for people to get back in at that sort of level. We've got our full team each week uh, once we're back again. And that's any any uh, um, any skill level. It doesn't matter. We've got a mixture. It, it doesn't matter what, how good, how bad you are. It really doesn't matter. It's just about getting out there and giving it a go. Um, but what we're then going to do from that, because we have got some great people that have really found their feet again, really reignited their passion. And some people haven't played football for like 12 years or four years. And they've got the bars back and they're ready. Their time is now. They're ready. So we will be starting a league team um, ready for next season. Um, we've started the ball rolling with just planning in the background. And we will be getting that rolled out um, ready for next season. But I think we've got to have it all registered by about March. So we'll have news of that coming up. But that's going to be slightly different um it will be mate's brand it will be out there doing everything we want to see through um, mates which is um promoting positive mental health helping people with positive mental health but it's a league team um and what we need the criteria will be ever so slightly different for that team in that these are people ready now to go and work as a team and work for you know uh winning basically working their way through that league like any other team and it gives them the next step so our key team our main thing is always going to be the the main team that we have at the moment this 11 aside saturday team that's always going to be the no commitment and all of that that is our bread and butter that is what how we get people back in the game but we're going to be able to offer this league team for people to progress onto that. And I think that's a very exciting and a very, especially so quickly, but we've definitely got the talent there and we've definitely got the appetite for it. And we've definitely got something that we can offer people there. And we will offer that. We, we want 
I want people that have never played football. I want people that have rediscovered their spark, and we we help them all the way through. In the same yeah, way, I think, that, I, I think that's the beauty. I, I think that's the beauty of it. Is it, like I said at the very start, it, it, it's football for everyone, you know, and that's what we've got from it being, you know, even if you just want to come to the training session, which we do with football fitness on a Thursday night, uh, be it, you know, on the Saturday coming to play games against uh, uh, other teams or even games against ourselves on Saturdays. Or if you want to be, you know, in a competitive league, um, we, we're hopefully going to have that, like you say, from March. So, uh, but we'll be in the getting that the ball rolling yeah. from March and be able to talk about that a bit more. But for next season, so I think we've got sort of something for everyone, you know, yeah. and, and, we'll and all say, of them are available to everyone as well. So, you same with the you ladies' do. team, we're definitely going to get much more involved in that world. You know, we've got a lot yeah. of restrictions around ladies' football. Um, which has been a nightmare during lockdown, especially for, for example, like Chelsea City ladies and things like that. You know, certain restrictions like that. I understand why um, for privacy and things like that, that um, in women's football or women's training, even they've got to have a changing room available and we've got to provide that. Unfortunately, the changing rooms aren't available at the moment at most places yeah. that we play. And that's really had a knock-on effect to women's football and women's, tra women's training. Um, because you've got somewhere like, let's say, Chelsea City ladies, once they're allowed, once they were allowed back into, as I understand it, once they're allowed back into their normal um, place with um, changing rooms, that's all fine. But they haven't been able to train anywhere else because none of the changing rooms have been open and you can sort of see out of a respect way that's brilliant that they get that privacy and things like that but equally it's not very fair on them at all that they're not allowed to they can't turn up in um the football kit and go home in the football kit they've got to have things on hand is my understanding um so we're and, and in a good way that's helped spur us on even more to quickly do what we can to get a proper established lady side sorted as well. Um, because we want to make sure that they get the opportunity they deserve. Absolutely. Andy, any comments? <laughs> You're on uh, mute you yourself. I can't, my finger keeps picking <laughs> stuff on me. Sorry. Um, so yeah, really no, doesn't... that'd be really good. I mean, that's a really exciting avenue. Like I, I've said before, you know, I've got a daughter who loves her football, and um, so you know, getting a women's team, I think, you know, it'd be it'd be excellent and and a great representation for the club for us to do that. Um, you know, and and uh, you know the um, I think I think you know we have had some interest in it before lockdown. We started to get quite a bit of interest in it. Um, and then it's sort of like, like you say, through lockdown, it's kind of ended. But, you know, we've got Sarah involved and she's really uh, got yeah, herself we, involved. We've got, so one of our mates, a normal mates ambassador from Mates. So as opposed to Mates FC, um, we've had a few new people come on as Mates FC ambassadors. And Sarah is one of those people that have asked to do that because uh, she's come in, never played football before thrown herself into it, thrown herself into full matches and everything, right? And I want her working with me and yourselves to craft our approach into women's football as well. Um, but that will be coming up as soon as we physically can after Christmas. We'll get the ball rolling yeah. on that as well. Um, and we've got a huge amount of things to do, but we're going to do them. And we're going to – the appetite's there. And it's for us, it's our responsibility to facilitate that and to give every opportunity that we can to every group of people that want to come and play and that can be benefit from playing or being involved. Yeah, and I think I think to your point, there's a massive appetite for it. You know, I didn't I didn't think it was going to be as big as it, it ever was. You know, when we when we you first started talking to me about this is what it is, this is what it's about. And when I was sitting in a pub going, people are still a goal and <laughs> 
So yeah. Feel better. And he was like, you know, like oh, all right, we, all right. we had enough people to do goals and stuff. And yeah, and it was, uh, you know, I couldn't believe the response we got from it. You know, we started off with a training session with, you know, five or six guys to then, you know, getting girls and getting, you know, I mean, one one day in the summer, I had about, I think it was about 20 something people training, you know, it was brilliant. I remember one week we had six new people turn up in one go who all yeah. weren't with each other, just randomly yeah. all, you know, oh, hang on, what's happening here? But um, yeah, we, we're also, we've got plans with the training. We tested a couple of new formats in the last few weeks after lockdown lifted. And the appetite there again is that we're full up every week for the Mates FC training. So there's very, very limited um, pitch availability. Um, but we're looking at another slot that we can get and looking at expanding the uh, Mates FC training into that slot so we can we don't have to limit numbers then and uh, we can get it out there the best we can. And I think I think the support we've had as well, like, everything's been really really positive um you know like i've got links with Bado spartak and they've been really really helpful letting us use some of their sort of facilities to do the training in the summer um and yeah like you, you know like local sort of clubs have, have really sort of shown an interest in it and been really supportive and you know i thank Bado spartak for, for letting us use their facilities throughout the summer um, because it was really good for us to to have somewhere that we could use week in and week out. So I think got, that's been excellent as well. Yeah, it's, just local support. Support. it's just been mad, isn't it? How many people have supported us like that with uh, the kindness that we've been shown. And that's without normally, without us even having to sort of go begging and explaining yeah. what we do, we're being offered these things straight off. Now, we've got a couple of comments from viewers. Um, Gemma, so Cy, who uh, Cy's wrapping presents tonight, um, but Gemma's wife um, is waiting. He's for watching it. the podcast. She's waiting. She's waiting for me to play football and uh, take a penalty. Yeah, I'll do a penalty. Do a um, penalty. Yeah. Then uh, Dan Ball, Mr. Tallis, I believe his yeah. name. Why is he telling me to smile? Now he's offering uh, some custard for your pudding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't really know how to take that. Right. Yeah, Lewis, Lewis King is giving Billy a round of applause. Yeah. Uh, Andy <laughs> West, Billy's shocking at pens. Billy's. Sh oh, that's my old mate. All right. Well, yeah. And then we've got a comment on there, but it's like a code, and I don't want to say it in case I don't understand it and it's something like terrible. So <laughs> just not mention it. It's probably not. It's probably just enough word for a goal or something. But I don't Turn know. It upside it. down. It says boobies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway. Um, also, so COVID tier four. Now, mm. up to tier three, we were. Eight. I'm the co. I'm the COVID officer. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I. I've said this all along. It doesn't matter whether we're allowed to play or not. It's whether we feel it's safe as well. You know, if we're allowed to play and we still don't think it's safe, if we think our players are not acting responsibly, if we think other players are not acting responsibly that we're playing, we will not be playing, full stop. Because we're here to improve people's health. We're not going to risk anyone's health by playing football, full stop. So tier four. We aren't allowed to play football. We understand that. And as we can see from the rates today and how things have increased, um, if we were allowed to play football in Tier 4, I wouldn't allow us to play football in Tier 4 at the moment, basically, because the way it's spreading here in Essex, it's ridiculous. This, the, we're, we're now 790 per 100,000, mainly for the Basildon area. But if you think the travel corridors in the summer yeah. were if it reached 20 per 100,000, and we're now at 790, it's mad. So, yeah, even if we were allowed to play, at the moment we wouldn't be playing. Yeah. Um, we had some fixtures in January planned. And... Um, Again, how that's looking and panning out at the moment, that was going to be, I think it was like the, the end of the first week in January. 
we aren't going to be allowed to play football at that point. No. So realistically, what we'll sort of start penciling in is a February return, hopefully. We'll keep our eye on everything. We'll look for a, a February return. The second we're allowed to come back, we will be back if it's safe, whether that be with Football Fitness Club, Mates FC training, or uh, we pull a game together straight away against ourselves. But the second we're allowed and the second we're safe, we will be back. Um, and in the meantime, hopefully, staying away from it for this long should make it go away a bit. Hopefully. You know, hopefully it's going to be worth it this time. Um, yes, it's annoying that we have to keep stopping and starting, but nothing's going to stop us, as in we will always be coming back. There's no doubt about that. And we get to, we get to use this opportunity to plan for the future as well. So on that note, any any local teams or anyone that's a little further away that wants to play us, anyone that's got their games cancelled or their fixtures cancelled for the last couple of weeks in December or uh, the whole of January, if you want to use, uh, if you want to reschedule and play against us, we've got Saturdays free. It is free to play us. We do not charge for any uh, cost for pitch hire or anything like that to you. That's for us. If you want to play, if you want to get out there, come and get involved. Um, we are your mates at gmail.com. Just send us an email or message us on here, message us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Um, we'll take your games. We'll, we'll take those fixtures. We'll play you. And we want to, we want something every week from February. Um, if we need to reschedule the February ones, fair enough. But we just want to get everything booked in. Um, <laughs> Mark Webb, social distancing in the showers from from now on. I think that's aimed at uh, Billy. Yeah, <laughs> he knows. Uh. <laughs> Bring your chamois. Bring your chamois, mate. <laughs> chamois. I used to when I was a kid. Oh yeah, um, come on. <laughs> I used to be a bit different to other children. I don't know if you'd believe that. But um, so whenever my dad used to like wash the car and he had a chamois, chamois leather out there, I'd take all my clothes off and then I'd put a chamois leather around me and pretend I was a caveman and then run down the street like that. How big was this chamois leather, man? I was a child. Like, I mean, if you're a kid, like, chamois leathers are like this big. No, they're not. No, you get big ones. You put it over regions. Yeah, like Adam. <laughs> Why are you using a chamois leather that's like two inch square? Well, that's I how I think... I'm using well, a nan's hanky to clean a car. Yeah, what I to mean, be fair, the size I... of a duster. Oh, I do want to be careful like... going down the garages down down uh, where Dave lives in case he's washing his car. <laughs> I've never washed my car. I. Uh... <laughs> tell the about. worst bit about it is his car's really tall as well. So when he does the roof, that's that's when you got to close your eyes. I'm like Jessica <laughs> Simpson from that um from that uh that video where she's washing the car in her little hot pants. Um, no, I um I don't wash my car. I get people to do it for me. And Did you um, pitch their show me levers. Then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> But it's just purely Imagine like, the, the guys watch. turn around and he's got his chamois leather. And nothing <laughs> his... <laughs> we told you, you're not allowed back here. Just running around pretending I'm Bam Bam from uh, <laughs> Lynch um, They're like, oh my God, that guy's back again, but he gives us a good tip. Yeah, it's John, John Barrowman's turn up. Day. What was that? Is that John Barrowman John again? Up. I'm singing so crime. Cool. <laughs> singing show tunes where it dressed as a caveman um, but um yeah no I, I, one day you know when sometimes you go to a car and you think oh hang on how have every bird in Chelmsford shat on my car right and i just went out one time and was like what? there's no trees here what's happened like why has this just suddenly happened to my car so i thought i better get that off to start with some of it looked like humans as well and um <laughs> then I realised I'd had the car for like three years and it was the first time I'd ever like gone to clean it myself and I couldn't reach the middle of the roof. Like, I was climbing up on it. And I've been to car washes before where people have like stood on top of my tyres and like climbed on the bonnet. And you're like, what are you doing? Why just clean my car? Why are you climbing over me? I'm not, it's not like I've just driven through like 
They're trying to get their chamois leather back. <laughs> there was definitely a chamois leather joke in there. <laughs> well, chamois that's leather is about the size of, if you skinned a cat, that's roughly how how big a chamois leather would be. Whoa, what random. You could have just said it's about the size of an A4 piece of paper. No, if you skin a cat, that's about the size. <laughs> you know, I want to know what you're using. Why are you using a post it note to. <laughs> <laughs> you've got, you know, geography part. teachers. Geography yeah. teachers have those leather patches on their. Why are you using a geography teacher's elbow to clean your car? It's a He's got a whiteboard, seat. Mark. He's got a whiteboard rubber. He's doing yeah. his car with. <laughs> Little <laughs> bar. Um, yeah, no, you buy one that. of those guys like uh, at the door when they knock on your door and say, "Oh, got a chamois leather, <laughs> twenty quid." Oh, but hey, <laughs> who'd you get that from? Is that Dave Chase? <laughs> it's the only bit I could rip off of him. Um, it's shammy. <laughs> the other thing I shammy used to do, Dave. It's shammy Dave. <laughs> the other thing I used to do that might be a bit weird was um, I had this shammy chase. bucket, right? <laughs> so where I lived as a child, I was allowed. You know, like when you're allowed between two lamp posts or whatever, yeah. like. Goal post. Tethered, like a goat <laughs> um i was allowed out like between these two lamp posts and then when i was a bit older i was allowed to go a bit further but because that was my turf um between those two lamp posts <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't oh. <call> you <laughs> like, it's like sort of <laughs> gangland yeah. Oh, here comes here comes Shammy Chase. <laughs> if, if anyone, if anyone, had, nothing had happened between those between them two lampposts. There was never any trouble. I kept a tight tip there, but um, a lot of people avoided those lampposts. Yeah. Well, what I had, <laughs> what, what I, had is, I had a KFC bucket, right? <laughs> and I decorated the outside of my KFC bucket, and I I made a superhero name for myself. I can't remember what it was. I really wish I could. Um, and then I made I made. <laughs> I made yeah, my own chamois leather is the cape. <laughs> oh, it smelled of wet, damp chamois leather. Um, but um, that's like cleaning people's cars. <laughs> I used to just roll across people's bonnets and like rub my back on it. Um, there's always dent, little fat, little fat boy rolling across people's cars. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so I had this KFC bucket and I made a superhero outfit and I kept it in this KFC bucket. I didn't want it to get wet, so I kept it in a black bin bag. And I hid it in a bush in someone's front garden a couple of doors down. <laughs> and uh, so what I used to do is my my where I live was on the main walk from uh, up, up to the local shops. So you'd have a lot of people walking past, going up to the local shops. So I'd like see them coming into my, you know, into my area of lamppost. And I think, all right. So once they're in my area, they'd come in and I'd lean against the other lamppost and I'd be like, right. And then the second they got out of, like, they went past, I'd run in a bush and I'd get naked and I'd change into my superhero outfit, right? And I'd, change, I'd change into my superhero outfit and then I'd crawl out of the bush dressed in a stinking a KFC and chamois leather. And... <laughs> Then I'd stand back at the same lamppost, right? And I'd wait for the person to come back from the shop. And as they went past, because I had a mask as well, <laughs> as they walked past, <laughs> as they walked past, they'd go past and I'd go, right? And as they go past, I'd think they didn't have a clue that I was that other person they said hello to earlier. <laughs> and that was it. That's a little that was, I've just walked the worry to... bit. The worrying bit about this is I went to the shops last week. <laughs> 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 and I thought, cool, is that the same guy I just said hello to? It can't be. <laughs> Why is he cleaning my car now? <laughs> Why has he got a chamois lever on? Dressed like a caveman. <laughs> well, no, 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 caveman was at the back. Had, um, so, at the back access, oh. no, I'd be the caveman, and out the front, I'd be a superhero. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be John Barrowman. <laughs> Bam bam. John Barrowman. <laughs> <laughs> You're a master of disguises. You're like, catch me if you can. Yeah. I never had any fancy dress off. 
I had to make my own stuff. Uh, you know, you've done a good job, mate. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> no one had a clue that was me. This... You should have been wearing that outfit tonight. Andy's made all the effort. You could, have worn, your, yeah. you could have worn your chamois. You could have come as a caveman. Yeah. With a chamois oh. leather. Yeah. <laughs> now, once I was dressed as Susan Boyle and I got really drunk and um, I had to dress as something beginning with S. And originally I was going to be, you know, when Sunita dressed in those banana skins, uh, banana um, leaves on X Factor, I was going to be yeah. her, but it was the wrong time of year. But um, yeah, so I dressed as Susan Boyle and it was all fine um, until I lost everyone in town. And then I found myself like at the bus station dressed as Susan Boyle on my own, uh, waiting for a taxi. And then it suddenly dawned on me. I was like, oh, I need to explain to people why I'm dressed as Susan Boyle. Right? Because otherwise I'm just dressed as a granny standing at a, um, with Subo written on my back. Um, <laughs> so I thought I need to explain or I just need to pretend it's not happening. So when I got in the taxi, I thought what I'll do is be overly manly. So I just got in and went, what well, mate, uh, told me where I needed to go. And then never mentioned that I was dressed as an old woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't know and he dropped, he dropped, he dropped him off. He said, oh, he's, he's up to it again." <laughs> and the funny thing was, remember <laughs> Andy? Remember when I was like, like Day? <laughs> when I was <laughs> Dave, Ed, Dave Edna. <laughs> Dave Edna. What? I dra- uh, yeah, I remember that. Dave Edna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had too much time to get ready. And my mate's girlfriend uh, put fake nails on me, like real ones. Well, real fake nails. You know what I mean? Um, and then I realised I couldn't use my phone or anything because I had these big nails on me and I couldn't do anything. And then I found myself again at a taxi station, uh, taxi rank in Baddow Road, and I needed to rip my uh, rip my gusset off, uh, <laughs> my tights. I had to rip my tights off, and I was just standing. I thought, now I've had enough of these; they're falling down. So I ripped them, and then I couldn't work out how to get them off. So I just ripped them to shreds, and I was like, it's like I was attacking myself at the taxi rank and then throwing my tights in the uh in the bin and everyone just sort of backed off and left me alone and then in the morning i woke up and i i got in and i must have got so annoyed that i couldn't use my phone i just cut all my fingernails like all these fake ones off and then i went to the bathroom run under like put under a hot tap and was just trying to pull the rest of it off but i didn't know if it's my actual fingernail or a fake one and then like everyone's like well, why didn't you just use nail remover i'm like because I haven't got any, because I'm a man. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a geezer. I'm a, yeah. I'm a man. Yeah. We don't yeah, I'm a geezer. <laughs> but, but let's so, do it. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not the only strange one here. So you two must have done something similar as a child. I remember uh, I remember saying to me, Mum, I've had enough. I've had enough of you. I'm go- I'm leaving. I'm leaving home. She went, OK. And I said, I'm, I'm going. She went, OK. So uh, she helped me pack. And uh, I, I must have been about five at, at the time. And I walked out the house and I went, right, see you later. Shut the door. And we used to live in a close. And uh, and uh, one of my neighbours came walking into the close. And I was sitting at the end of my close on this bag, on this like, little suitcase. Like padding. And he, went, and he went, what are you doing? And I said, I'm leaving home. I've had enough of her. And uh, he went, oh, all right. He said, you haven't got very far. And I'm I said, I'm not allowed to leave the class. Oh. <laughs> but that's the thing. And my mum, like my mum, I wasn't allowed to go outside the close. I was allowed to play in the close, but I wasn't allowed out of the close. And so I was sitting on my bag and he said, yeah, you got far. And I was like, yeah, I'm not allowed to leave the close. But I'm not going home. So, yeah, that was, that was quite cool. Want... But I'm not going home. I'm making a stand. And then I, I finally came home and said, all right, mum, I've decided I am going to come home. I was probably hungry, is more to the point. <laughs> You've run out of marmalade sandwiches. Um, yeah. you're, you're saying you had your little bag. Um, I used to get so excited about like going anywhere. And I'm quite like that about this, like these football match things now as well. But um, like I'd get up things. at three in the morning and I'd just stand at the, at the patio door shaking with excitement and just throw up. Like I'd get so excited. So they couldn't tell me where I was going. Um, this is a nice fancy dress outfit. <laughs> what is it? Paddington. Paddington Bear. Paddington Bear. He's wearing a chamois leather. That was me, yeah. No, it's a, I had carpet over my face. 
I had carpet over my face. Is that actually you? No, it's not. No, it's not. Where's he get that? No, it's no, a no, piece no, of carpet. That, it's next. a bit of carpet. Over the next time. <laughs> carpet. That's a proper picture of Paddington and Bear. Shut up, you. <laughs> Look. Oh, it's gone now. Where is it? I think you should wear that the next in the next podcast. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Should we do a fancy dress one for New Year's, and then not actually turn up in fancy dress? No, because yeah, I've fallen <laughs> into this trap. Right, Billy. I don't know. Got... I don't know what films you've been watching, but that's not a real bear outfit. It's a round piece of carpet with a very depressed boy in it. No, nah, mate. Look, that looks like teddy bear. Not even fingers on that side. How old are you? Now, look at the how round the carpet is on the legs. How old? <laughs> no, what are you talking about? You, that's not real. Who made it? What do you mean? It's not real. Pa it's got a spoon on the head. My, um, my dad used to. Uh, my dad used to make costumes, and we uh, we had to go to school. It was for the wedding. You know, the royal wedding. We had a fancy mm. dress party, and my dad made a mug. Out like a, a full size mug, and on the front he's he put a picture of Diana and Charles, and then he cut out Charles's head. So my head, <laughs> <laughs> and I was this massive mug walking around. I'm still a massive mug, but like <laughs> literally, literally, my head was Prince Charles's head. It was great, great costume. He used to, to go all right. out, you know. I, I remember Fergie's wedding, and I celebrated that by laying in the path outside. And had kids jump over me on BMXs. That's how I celebrated their wedding. <laughs> you you got some good memories. I remember everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Billy, what so about you? So most of the people in history. <laughs> I, I had a lot of shit. Oh, they didn't know that was me. I didn't know that was me. carpet on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first time, is it? <laughs> Oh, do you remember when he was a superhero and he used to pretend and change, change. So when you come back from the shop, he'd be somebody else. The yeah, and, then, I, and then you don't yeah. forget when I had my drum and bass phase and my happy hardcore phase, phase, and I was DJ Nemesis, and we broadcast um, to 1.3 miles from our house uh, on Desire FM. Yeah, DJ Nemesis. And I had a bandana from Alton Towers when Nemesis <laughs> opened and it said Nemesis on it. And I used to pretend that I had it made. <laughs> I bought it at the merchant. <laughs> merchant. Oh, yeah, yeah, merch. You, 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 you right. had merch then before the YouTubers. They had merch. Yeah. Alton yeah. Towers merch. <laughs> I've been, oh, I've been on it. the bubble ride. <laughs> so what have you, Billy, what, what memories do you have as a child? Um, what, what, what do you want? I don't know if I've got something anything stuff. weird, anything weird, um, well, anything like similar, anything similar. Um, I've got, a, I don't know, I've got stories about shitting myself. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, uh, yeah, you can go for that, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, there's a moral there as well. I, I think uh, I felt bad. I gave some people Lucas. I don't know where you wanted me to take it. I thought, well, you know, I'll throw this out there. <laughs> I think you, you took it. You took it. You took it. my toe in the water. I'm testing it. <laughs> Can I talk about that? <laughs> uh, we'll we'll I'll get that off air. And uh, maybe next week. Maybe next week. I, I got I got thrown out of I got thrown out of the swimming pool for weeing in the swimming pool when I was little. Was you stood and, outside uh, it or was you in the pool? And my, my, yeah, I was, I was inside. And my mum's my mum took me back down there and said, "Can I speak to the manager? You've thrown my son out for weeing in the pool." Like loads of kids were in the pool, and he went yeah. off the top diving board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what about like football at that time? Um, I was in a football team um at that time as well i was in my cubs football team 25 christchurch west ham colors um but uh i don't know how i was in a team and i don't think we ever played football but um I, 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 do, I do remember playing at marriages one week um but yeah not as in marriages meal not getting married to the, the, football shop. the millers marriage yeah the, millers. I the pet shop that's it <laughs> 
So, what are your memories of like getting into football and local football at the time? Well, I remember um, I, I played for Rayleigh Boys because I, I was brought up in Rayleigh, and uh, I remember going out because uh, the me and my friend we were exactly the same age, but a day, and we were we lived two doors apart, and his dad's. Uh, brother managed the team and, and he said oh we're going football do you want to come so I went yeah yeah and he said just need to bring your boots and everything and I went for training and somebody had lent me some socks and they were like but they were like adult socks and I was I was only about must have been about six or seven Would you look like Christian and I turned up and they just, kept fall, they, just, they just kept falling down and I had to keep pulling them up like as I was running so the whole I think the whole first training session I was just pulling these bloody socks up and I had these little uh, Dunlop boots that would I and uh, yeah and and I remember uh, we had a, our first match and I turned up and the, the one of the dads was like oh you, you, where's your shin pads and I was like I haven't got shin pads and uh, one of the yeah, dads went <laughs> one of the dads went don't worry about it don't worry wait wait here wait here and I was like okay and he went to his car and he got the racing post out of his car <laughs> out of an escort. <laughs> And he folded it up to like shin pad size bits of newspaper and shoved them down my socks. And he was like, the referee will never know. And he'll be all right. And I went out, keep pulling my socks up with these bits of newspaper and shin pads. Uh, that was, and it being absolutely freezing. Remember oh. when your legs used to go like corn beef? Cold weather, and, mate. Yeah. Corn beef. You'd get and then, uh, and then I got moved. Then I got moved to be the goalkeeper and I can remember just standing in goal. And at the time, there was none of this starting off at five aside and then seven aside and nine aside. It was you went straight in 11 aside, full size pitch as a as a like six, seven year old standing yeah. in this goal and looking at it. And uh, and like some of the games were like ridiculous, like 20 something nil, because if you shot, you it was a goal. You and I remember just thinking, oh, I hope the ball don't hit me this week because it used to sting. <laughs> you had your little legs out, no Under Armour, none of that. All the, um, the newspapers tied your legs. It feels like it feels like a Kez story now when I tell it. You know, Isn't it? <laughs> and like, don't you think like when we say things now, it sounds like you know when we was young and older people would talk about the old days, like, and it sounds it like, like it's like a different world. But I, I genuinely still feel that I'm 18, yeah. and yeah. Uh, when I got to sixth form, nothing's changed. Like literally nothing. My sense of humour, nothing has changed since then. And then I was thinking about like some things, because like with Sai, um, like you say with your mate, Sai is one day different to me, age wise. And uh, yeah, like talking about school things and all of that. I love it. I love thinking about all those weird things that used to happen at school. And like, I remember writing a book about um, lemmings um, when I was in what they call year six now, but uh, fourth year juniors. And uh, it was about removal. They, they lived in space and they, uh, they used, if you wanted to move to a different planet, you hired a massive lemming and you went up its bum and put everything <laughs> They'd fly across the fly across to the other planet, and they were removal vans. And I wrote a whole book about that. And then um, I also can, can I get a signed copy of that, please? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I've written quite. A, I wrote one about our friend. Well, actually, you wouldn't know. Him. I can't say what it's called on here, but um, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, I like making like sort of half of it was real. It's about us growing up, and half was just completely made up. But, um, yeah, and then we made this chocolate bar in that year at school as well. And I called it, oh, what's the word for a rent boy? Uh. Gigolo. That's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I didn't know. I didn't know what it meant. I just thought it sounded like an exotic chocolate. So I made this, uh, we all had to make a chocolate bar and name it. And mine was called Gigolo, and the teacher was like having none of it. And then I, I really was like, no, I want it called that. It's, it's Italian. It's it's uh, it's uh, classy. So yeah, it weren't until like years later I was like, oh, well, that's why he didn't want me to call it that. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So Billy, what was your when, when? Where did you start playing football? Um, I think I was probably about yeah, probably about six or seven. My brother, older brother Chris took me over to Galloway Eagles, so they had training over Chelmer Park. 
Um, so I remember yeah. going over there on a Saturday morning um, with my friend Tom and, um, yeah, started playing like there. And like, yeah, you said about being that age and playing on 11 aside pitches, you know, adult pitches as kids. And I'm looking back, you know, I always used to think that, no, they were just big pitches because we were little, but we actually played on big pitches. You know, the kids yeah. now, when they're playing, they've got the seven aside pitches with Samba goals and, um, I think that helps them um, uh, helps them out a lot. But um, yeah, I sort of went over there and we had a manager called John and um, he was brilliant. Like, he was such a great guy. And I think I was there for about three years with him as our manager. And um, yeah, just really enjoyed the training sessions, really enjoyed playing football. And uh, then it must have been about about 10 years ago. And I, I, did, I didn't see him from the age of like, Seven, from the age of like eight or nine till I was about 27, 28, maybe 29, I don't know. But I was in a pub and um, I walked in and he was there and I was like, oh my God, I was like, it's my old manager. And I just felt so excited. I was like, I'm going to go and say hello. So I went over to him and uh, he, he was, you know, he was, he was in a pub. Of course, he was drinking because he was in a pub. We were all drinking. But um, yeah, I remember going up to him, but like, oh, John, like, um, I don't know if you remember me. Like, you used to you used to trade me as a you used to trade me as a kid, like nearly twenty years ago. And he was like, "Nah, don't remember." And I was like, oh, "Okay, fine." But then I carried on talking. And I thought, oh, "You're a bit of a you're a bit of a muppet, actually." And it kind of killed my dream. I wish I'd left it as nostalgia and didn't go and talk to him at all. But um, anyway, but that's the thing, isn't it? You know, those memories they mean everything to you, and yeah. I don't want to think what my teacher used to think of me as I used to write these strange things or another thing with that same teacher. I, I wrote, um, he was a sports teacher. Well, we had like teachers that specialised in certain things in our junior school and his thing was sports for the whole school. And because we was in his class, we got to do sports every single day. It was brilliant. We, we you know, obviously I hated it because I was a little fat thing, but um, in a chamois leather. But um <laughs> Yeah, we did get to do that every day. We had a great opportunity. And um, my niece was going on the same school. It was our first school trip. We like um, we stay away. But she was a bit worried about it. And uh, I said, oh, I've still got my, my old project up, the, up my parents' loft. So I got it out and I brought it down. And in the middle of the front of this folder, so we made this folder from the school trip that was a week long. And for the whole term, we put stuff into this big project and we made this about all the things we'd seen on this school trip. And, uh, yeah, in that, we'd seen these little small ponies and the front cover of my project was a pony with five legs. Right, okay. <laughs> and every week, I'd take that folder to the teacher to get him to like mark my work from that week. I was completely oblivious at the time that I just had a donkey with or a pony with five legs. But Not a tail. What on earth a tail. did that poor man have thought of me? Like some kid just putting that on there. But, you know, sports at that time, as you say, it just, you, you had to fit into the adult world. Yeah. Almost. yeah. And what's yeah. available now? And like, Andy, with the kids' teams you're involved with and things like that, wherever we go, whatever we, we play at various pitches and wherever we are it is absolutely jam-packed with kids teams and kids to practice and all that it's brilliant what we've got available now yeah i mean it really is i mean it's a little bit uh, like when you're when you're sort of managing it and you start off as five aside you're like oh five aside like you know but but it's so good because you know the whole fa ethos on it is every kid gets to touch a ball and when I think back to my days of like, you know, if if you weren't um, if you weren't the most talented kid in the football team, you could go out and just stand in in, in on an eleven aside pitch, just freezing because yeah. you wouldn't even be involved because the good kids yeah. would be running the ball around you. You know, five aside, everyone's involved because you've got to build the play to to get forward, and you know, and then you go up to seven aside. And then, like at the minute, my 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 team have moved up to nine aside, and it's starting to feel a little bit more like like what I sort of class as sort of real football. Mm -hmm. um, but it's good because they've had that development bit. It didn't matter if they were offside, you know. And now they're building it. And now we've gone to nine aside. They've got to start thinking about the offside rule, 
you know, and we've got linesmen now and they're starting to think that. So it's next part of development. So yeah, it's, it's all really... about developing rather than just thrown in and, and kids to know like losing. I think a lot more kids now uh, will love the game for longer where some kids just fell out of love with the game and never, yeah, you'll build, you know. Because, again, putting me, you know, you had that experience. We just got a comment there. Daniel Brewer, Bibles yeah. for shin pads. What did he say? Bibles for shin pads. <laughs> Bibles for shin pads. He's got, um, he's got good, strong legs. He don't need shin pads. That's why. He's yeah. very protected. Very well protected. <laughs> by, by, leg. by little baby Jesus. <laughs> But um, I, I just remember, I just remember it being so such a vast pitch. I remember that, like you know, you could have the other thing as well is nowadays, like where it's on a sort of five a side pitch, it's like both ends. Like you couldn't, it take you twenty minutes to get back up the other end. You know, like it was, yeah. Uh, so, so with that development now, my view was, and it still is, I go very much on the thing of. No, you know, like Uno, no one's ever shown me how to play Uno, no one's ever shown me how to play cards or anything like that. Yeah, I haven't got a clue. Same with football, no one ever showed me. And then we'd go and join like a football team, we'd go over the park, and everyone could just play football, and I couldn't because I didn't know anything and I didn't know what to do. Um, what age was this? Are you talking about, Dave? It's still now, it's still no, now. Yeah. Like, it's them little things I think people are taught as kids that the real the real basics around mm. around football and is you know just just that, that first touch you know and how to how to pass them little things and if you get them little things then everything else just comes natural and keeping the ball <laughs> if you are side green yes. it's about keeping the ball yeah and possession. what Andy just explained you know that progression now and how the development works. That's amazing, isn't it? That's brilliant. Well, that, that's, I mean, that's the big thing for me. Like, since I've been involved in youth football, the bit I love the most is developing the kids and seeing them come on. And, like, you know, like, you're sort of like my team have just been moved up a league. Well, and, and, you know, like, you watch them and, and they're struggling again now. So they were sort of really doing well. Now they've gone back because they've got into a higher league with tougher teams. And then they'll start to get it together again and they'll build again. And that part for me is the development and just seeing the kids enjoy it. And it's very similar uh, at the mates. You know, we've we've got guys that, guys and girls that have come along and never played football before. And you see them develop. And like some of them have turned into, you know, really, really stable football players. You know, they're really, they're, they're starting to understand and, you know, understand about sometimes it's the stuff you do without the ball at your feet is as important as when you've got the ball at your feet and the movement and, you know, being an option for a pass and that sort of stuff. And it's very similar to the kids. It's, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter on age. It's getting the basics. And once you start to get that ba the basics, you can play in a match, yeah. you know, and, and, and the only way you're going to get those basics is to keep playing and, mm. and come along and each week. With the new uh, sessions of Mates FC training after Christmas, um, that is something I'm really looking forward to, of that opportunity to actually start building the skills of the team, gelling the team together and getting everyone up to speed with, we've got some great people there. And also like yeah. with Football Fitness Club, you know, like your coach is there. Um, now what's uh, uh, James, Jim? Yeah. He's what, 10 years at Tottenham Academy and he's at West Ham now? He's West Ham, yeah. Oh, yeah, and like that sort of background, that sort of background, you know, we've got that at our hands. And, he, you know, he helps we'll us. Like that South End. Yeah. Oh, South End? <laughs> How's their pitch we doing? A, we had a draw. Week? We had a draw this week. Come on. Get in. I tell you. Did you get a ball between the sticks? Down. I tell you. I reckon I'm the water was all them balls for the uh, again. Was it the what you what you have underneath the grounds? It cockles. Prawns. Prawns. Oh, I'm glad you've been listening, Billy. Yeah, it's good. It's uh, cockle shells. Yeah. Is it really? Help helps your drainage. Yeah, that's why our pitch is so good. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, yeah, Billy. Andy lives in a massive cockle shell. <laughs> What with SpongeBob SquarePants? <laughs> no, with Shammy Dave. 
every time every time every time Andy moves, you know them hermit crabs that just go to a bigger shell. Yeah. Andy just backs himself into a bigger shell. Right. <laughs> this is a thing. I want I want to share some knowledge with you, and make your knowledgeable. And now I feel like uh, like I wish I hadn't. Uh, no, I no, I'm, I'm glad I know it. I'm sorry to have. I'm glad that. I know it. <laughs> we've had some great we've had some great players there over the years. It's been <laughs> Dan Collymore. Oh, lad. All right. Spencer Pryor. Justin Edinburgh. Great player. These are, these are big brother contestants, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Jason Lee. Great player. Yeah, we've had some uh, some great players. Freddie Eastwood. Can't Freddie forget Eastwood. Him. Oh, yeah, I remember that name. Great. Is he, from, is he from Eastwood? He was. He did live in Eastwood, didn't he? Uh, no, he. Uh, I think Eastwood's in Southend. I thought he's way, I think. But yeah, great Steve player. Tomato. Steve Tilson went on to be the manager. Great player. Chrissy Powell. Yeah, we've, we've had all, all the big names there. Oh, Chris Packham. Alison Moye. <laughs> She's a great player. <laughs> She's not She's... No, Alison, you, you ain't seen. <laughs> She was a fan. Alison Moyer, she used to queue up in front of me. Well, she never queued. She always used to get in before me. I'd just be like, all right. Hey, you should have blagged it. I'm, I'm yeah, she done that, like the I'm Diana Ross thing at the uh, 94 World Cup. I was only about 30. The, uh, Alison Moyer would always uh, she'd do the first kick. What's that called? <laughs> uh, kick off? The kick off. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> Moye's out there again, like oh, Stampede, yeah, smashing all the cockle shells down under that pitch. <laughs> Taking all the glory, coming out yeah. of a prawn army. Prawn <laughs> army? <laughs> the shrimpers, <laughs> yeah. the shrimpers. <laughs> we got and the yeah. dark, dark lobsters, they're coming up the back. This is brilliant. Yeah. Right, uh, on that note. Alison Moye, uh, uh, prawn uh, army. Are we getting... <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Seasiders. Up the Seasiders. Yeah. Go on, the Blues. Go on, the Blues. Come on, boys. See, it's the same. All West Ham fans support Southend, really. You can always tell when West Ham are away because Southend get a bigger crowd. <laughs> I remember the first game I went to. Nathan, as well as Alison Moy. I said, excuse me, mate. We're there for Alison Moy. I remember going to my first match and I said to the guy, excuse me. Alison Moy, he's stamping up, stamping up the Olympic Park with a prawn army. <laughs> we, we have a few celebrity fans, actually. Oh, OK. Uh, I've Terry, been in that chip shop. Terry Alderton. Oh, yeah. I've been in that chip shop uh, near the, near the Cliffs Pavilion. That's nothing near it, is it? And there's <laughs> nowhere near the ground. No. You got like Les Dennis, a silver graph on a bottle of vinegar. Um, Dave, Dave went to Dave went to Dave went to watch South End football team. He said, "Excuse me, mate, do you know where the ground is?" And the bloke went, "Yeah, just follow the crowd, mate." He ended up in the Cliff Pavilion. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, no, I've, I've Put, nearly got the Cliff Pavilion. Yeah. I was at um I was at what's that thing called pantomime. Um I was at a pantomime. Oh no, you weren't. <laughs> it was um it was David Hasselhoff. You, you right? yeah, that's a dead it's joke. Brilliant. David Hasselhoff. He's behind you. And Christopher Biggins, <laughs> right? What more do you want than that? I tell you, I'm a big fan of Biggins. And the boy that played Peter Pan was a little bit heavy. And he just kept was thundering. He, he was my brother. Like a like a wrecking ball on the stage. But then they dropped all these big sponges from the roof, right? And or ceiling. And um, you're supposed to fry them at um David Hasselhoff. Oh no, you're not. And there's a, they were supposed to look like bricks, but there was an old woman a few seats in front of us, and we just started frying them at the back of her head. That's unkind, um, David. Yeah. yeah, that's unkind. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's all coming to the surface. Uh, it's all coming out. The nice yeah. guy, nice guy. We thought Shammy, Shammy uh, Dave was a nice guy. Yeah, is that your alter ego is just a really nasty person. <laughs> I used to get called. What's that whale called? That was like Shammy. I used to get Shammy, called Shammy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, right, I'm going to lose power soon. I think I'm going to wish everyone a happy Christmas. Well, just, just move into a bigger shell. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah. Uh, we'll leave you. We'll leave you all in peace now. Thank you for watching. And um, yes, it's not all about football, um, but that's what we want. We want to build a community, get people to get to know us, um, get to know that we're not. You know, there's nothing wrong with clinical things in the world of mental health at all. You know, but we can still have fun. You know, we want to get you back out on that pitch. We want you to have fun. We want smiles. We want we're a friendly bunch as you can see i promise i'll never turn up just wearing a chamois leather and i won't Look be up. crawling out of a bush with a kfc bucket either oh, um, spoiler billy spoiler. will promise that he'll sort his toilet habits out <laughs> uh, and, uh, <laughs> and i'll get i'll buy some shin pads yeah <laughs> he'll get his own shin pads and uh it will probably have a lovely. Probably you're gonna have a nice Christmas with Alison Moore in the prawn army. Right, I'm just hoping Southend win on Boxing Day. Come on, come on, you blue boys. Yeah. What do you call them? The blue, blue boys. Blue boys. The blue boys. Blue balls. I don't know anything like this. I might have us as the chamois. The chamois. Seasiders. Is that a dog wimping? Yeah, I've got my dog snoring. Like, right. oh. 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 oh, look. <sighs> See him all night. Cute, cute dog. Yeah, snoring, farting. Brilliant. Right, well, well, have a lovely Christmas, everyone. Um, yes, and guys. we'll see you in the new year, and hopefully we'll see some new faces uh, um, at both uh, Mates and Football Fitness. And hopefully we haven't scared anyone away. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you so much for everything, everyone that's played for us and been involved. And uh, we'll keep in the loop. We're still doing this every week. And, uh, yeah. And oh, if you want to play Bill. us, get in, get in touch, please. Yeah, you Daniel Bruce just said Reggie. I presume that's your dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Right. Take care. Take Bye -bye. care, guys. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I'm off to see Merry Alison Moyer and the... <laughs> pull, pull <laughs> <on me>. <laughs> Blue <laughs> boys! <laughs>